So next up, we have um, another great talk. Um, this one now by Dr. Nassim Dehouch, who is the founder and developer of Cydex. So Dr. Dehouch holds a PhD in computer science from the Paris Dauphine University and a state engineering degree from Huari Bomedian University of Science and Technology. He has authored some 20 plus publications on topics including decentralized science, peer review and AI, and has been actively deploying his expertise in these fields by advising startups and institutions in the domains of crowd labor, smart contract security, incentive alignment, social graphs, decentralized healthcare, and more. Most recently, Dr. Dehouch has been finalizing the launch of Cydex, which is a very exciting framework, um, which is a platform that essentially allows and empowers DSI and domain expert DAOs, like what we saw earlier today, um, to kind of effortlessly, effortlessly launch their own peer-reviewed academic journals. And so uh, I myself, and I'm sure the rest of us here are extremely grateful to have Dr. Dupush here with us today. And we'll all be um, happy to understand or to, to participate in his topic of on-chain peer reviewing, as I'm sure all of us can, especially the Research Club, found, the Research Hub Foundation and community can understand that peer reviewing is at best broken, I guess, as we can claim it, um, a nice way of putting it. And so without further ado, Nassim, it's a pleasure to speak with you again, to see you again, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Jelani, for the invitation, for your kind words. Uh, before I start, just a disclaimer, I caught COVID two days ago, fortunately, and so I apologize in advance if my brain's a little slow and my voice a little nasal. So I have no idea how I sound. Uh, I'll try to do my best anyway. Uh, and keep the uh, presentation not just about Cydex as a tool, but really as uh, as general as possible about, as you have said, the brokenness of uh, modern publishing, and also how we can solve it with or without blockchain. So um, I think we can all agree uh, that modern publishing is broken. We have all seen the memes. We have uh, I'll go through that quite fast. Uh, we have this basic problem of incentives, which is that uh, both the production of content as well as its quality control is performed by uh, highly skilled experts for free, and we even have to pay to do it. Uh, so the means that um, academic publishers make you pay thousands of dollars to host a PDF are true to some extent. We can keep them as, you know, uh, an actionable basis for, for discussion. But later, we'll also have to say uh, some nice things about academic publishers because there is some value they bring besides you know, just hosting the PDFs. But as a, a starting point, it's a good one, I think. Uh, in fact, one thing I've discovered uh, while making this sort of uh, research for, for, you know, for Cydex is that the system itself was invented by uh, Robert Maxwell, which is uh, the father of uh, the infamous uh, Gillen. Um, and so it, it is uh, a vicious system at its root. Uh, we have all seen, you know, the super predatory uh, recent publishers like MDPI who published thousands of not articles, but uh, special issues uh, per year. Uh, and there is also a problem that we have to solve of um, incentivizing people to uh, to review papers. So even the big publishers nowadays are having trouble finding, uh, uh, you know, uh, reviewers. And one concerning uh, development because of this is that uh, people are seeing more and more uh, undergrads review papers. So I don't think that's a good solution, and that's another thing we need to do, to address. And so this leads to uh, huge delays for uh, authors when they submit their papers. And so all these are problems that have been around for years that are becoming uh, you know, more and more acute. And there's also a problem that uh, the papers are not actually made to be, to be read and you know, to, to have an impact, but mainly to be cited uh, to you know, to act as KPIs for your performance as a researcher. Uh, and so there's also a problem of readership for, for these papers. And of course, there's the problem of replication, which I, I did not address myself, but I've, I've seen some uh, very interesting work being done around it in uh, this side. Now, is blockchain the only solution? Is it uh, even a solution? Not necessarily. Uh, I should mention that 
some classic solutions that exist uh, have solved all these problems, uh, notably the, the problem of incentives for uh, reviewers and for uh, editorial board members. One of the, the most prestigious journals in my field, Combinatorics, uh, is this one, the Electronic Journal of Combinatorics, which has been around since the 90s for more than 30 years. It's a very prestigious journal, very serious, owned by its editorial board, as you can see. And uh, it has it's a not-for-profit uh, endeavor. So it is free for readers, free for authors, very uh, you know, sane and uh, virtuous uh, system. But it may have a problem with its uh, economics model because uh, it is sponsored by uh, universities providing hosting and uh, tech, but uh, there isn't much uh, you know, uh, income being generated. And so you could say that this is funded by the, the children of the, the editorial board members who, who pay in not seeing their parents. So th there is a problem of uh, profitability here that we may address. Uh, and there's also a, a very interesting solution for the problem of finding reviewers that was uh, quite popular in the mid-2010s. Uh, it, it, it was active from 2011 to 2017 called Peerage of Science, created by uh, a scientist, uh, which is a service that outsourced, a uh, Web2 service that outsourced uh, peer review for uh, big uh, publishers. And you see that they had contracts with uh, all the big ones, Springer, uh, Taylor & Francis, BMC, LGD, et cetera. Uh, so uh, this shows, this goes to show that uh, these publishers are uh, typically open to new solutions and they, they support them if they are good. Uh, and this was a good one. They had uh, a, a rather complex, I would say, model for uh, the incentives of reviewers that did not pay them, but they had a system that uh, which stated that if you if you wanted to submit a paper as a, an author, you, you needed to perform some, re some reviews, uh, some, again, rather complex system for setting deadlines for both authors and uh, reviewers, which may explain the fact that they, they struggled a little bit to, to scale it. Uh, and they only had 102 submissions in 2017. And that's the year they decided to close the service, to discontinue it. But uh, the, the system itself was, again, uh, a good one, virtuous for uh, the problem of uh, finding reviewers. And this idea of uh, outsourcing reviews is also an interesting one. So there are Web 2 and even Web 1 uh, solutions uh, to these problems. But I do believe that uh, Web 3 blockchain offers better technical solutions for three particular aspects. Uh, the first one is uh, acting as a ledger of record. And this is something that you don't even need a user wallet for. So this is something that uh, publications, journals could take care of uh, by themselves, independently of uh, user interactions. I'll show some examples. And then if we increase the, the, the technical requirement and sophistication from uh, expected from users a little bit and expect them to have a wallet, um, Blockchain also offers better solutions for uh, identity management and uh, access control. I'll show some examples as well. And even further, uh, payment processing. So uh, Sinex as a whole uh, is uh, a full stack solution. So that includes both the smart contracts uh, to handle all these aspects, as well as the front end and back end. Uh, written with as little uh, dependencies as possible. So for the first aspect of uh, record keeping, uh, one thing I noticed, and uh, I may be wrong about this, but uh, it seems that the digital object identifier system, the DOI system, is really a poor man's version of uh, what NFTs are, because it's supposed to be immutable. Uh, but it's in fact just a URL, traditional uh, centralized URL in a server somewhere that points to a publisher's, uh, you know, uh, content, a publisher's URL, another URL. Uh, so two two possible points of failure, and the the most basic way we can have we can integrate, uh, you know, uh, on chain um, aspects in uh, a publication would be to have either on top of a traditional DOI system or uh, 
as a replacement for it, uh, to have uh, a more serious uh, and actually immutable DOI system uh, based on NFT. So this is a format uh, we have written, uh, a novel NFT format that uh, not only is immutable because the PDF would be stored in IPFS, the, the NFT uh, would, would be written on chain, uh, but it can also store uh, richer metadata than uh, traditional DOI. So you can have uh, the review comments stored as part of the, the metadata of this, uh, you know, on-chain uh, DOI. You can have timelines, which are important as well to know how fast a journal is. That's a very important aspect for authors uh, that can be tampered with, you know, by, by editors. Sometimes they are not very transparent about these aspects. So you could have, uh, again, a ledger of record for uh, the, uh, the events and uh, milestones of the processing of that uh, that paper all stored uh, within this NFT. And further, uh, we also allow to monetize uh, the, these NFTs, which represent you know, accepted uh, articles for publication through the, uh, the Ocean Marketplace. Ocean uh, is the, the funder of uh, Cynex. And so uh, as part of the, the integration, uh, we have used the compatible formats to their uh, NFT and token, uh, you know, uh, format, which they typically use for data sets and uh, algorithms. And so we thought, why not extend it to also manuscripts? So the DAOs that use SideX to, to, you know, to launch their own publications could sell their articles uh, through the, the Ocean Marketplace. So that's the most basic way in which uh, we can integrate on-chain. Uh, further, if uh, our users have uh, a wallet, uh, the blockchain also offers great solutions for uh, identity management and for ownership. Uh, first, there is uh, the fact that reviews can be permissionless, so it's not uh, editors selecting uh, reviewers, but uh, reviewers having incentives to participate. And here, a requirement, which is kind of a difficulty for all DAOs uh, in which we are trying to integrate SIDEX, is that uh, you have to perform manual uh, you know, KYC process to verify that uh, these reviewers have the, you know, the minimum uh, qualifications to be able to review. For example, in MedDAO for medical peer review, uh, it's rather straightforward because there is a centralized database for all uh, at least for all US uh, medical doctors. So people send you, uh, you know, uh, a selfie with their ID and you, you check their qualifications in this database and then you emit an NFT representing their qualification. So once they pass this check, any reviewer can review any paper. And we also incentivize the fact that uh, we try to make the number of reviews per paper uh, balanced. And so one mechanism we have used is to divide uh, you know, the publication charges paid by authors equally among all, all reviewers. So with this, you end up with uh, an equilibrium situation where all papers are pretty much the same number of reviews. And of course, uh, wallets, Ethereum accounts, allow for anonymity while we can ensure uh, qualifications through these uh, KYC processes. So this is another... Uh, Again, more technically, uh, more technically advanced way in which we can uh, integrate the blockchain. And it, once we have this, uh, I think the main and the most important uh, value uh, that could be used, for example, by the combinatorics journal I've, I've shown, uh, would be for payment processing in a decentralized way again. Uh, and here, you can represent ownership. Uh, you can uh, automatically share, for example, uh, article processing charges among all reviewers, uh, which again solves the problem of incentives. And there's also the permissionless aspect uh, that is important, uh, because if you launch a journal, for example, in North Korea, about advertising where it is uh, not from the point but completely illegal, uh, you would have most likely some conflict with the uh, terms of service of your you know, payment processor, just like you would probably in, in North America if you launch a journal about uh, Alexander de Dugin and his uh, thought. So uh, for this, and again, if we require a level of 
sophistication from our uh, authors where they have one and they know how to use it, the, the blockchain is unbeatable to be able to get any ideas out there, uh, no matter how you know, uh, controversial within our, uh, our jurisdiction, which aligns well again with the international nature of all of this nature of, of research. So these are the three levels we can cover with the, the full version, if you will, of, of Silex. But for the integrations uh, we have, we have a spectrum effect of, uh, you know, how on-chain on uh, these are. For perhaps our most mature integration, which is the blockchain law journal, currently located at blockchain law, here it is, blockchainlaw.org. Uh, so here we just use the most basic kind of uh, on-chain cap capability, which is uh, as a ledger of record. So uh, this is again, the, the, the most basic uh, form of integration that we can, we can have, which is to use, as I've said, NFTs as a, a sort of uh, actually immutable uh, DOI. Uh, so we use the, the NFT format uh, in this journal, which is about uh, blockchain law. So we have a very nice uh, editorial board of specialists uh, from Yale, from uh, many crypto uh, firms. So as a side note, uh, if anyone is uh, interested in blockchain law or would like to, to, to provide uh, industry insights as well, uh, please reach out to me. I will introduce you to uh, the, the two uh, the chief editors of this journal. And I uh, would be very happy to have you part of uh, this job. So this is an example of an integration that is at the most basic level, uh, again, as a ledger of record for the articles. More advanced, uh, at least from a Web3 perspective, integrations. Uh, we have the one with MedDAO. <clears throat> Here the idea is to outsource medical peer review for uh, medical journals. Uh, so they use the system of KYC to, to determine the, the appropriate medical specialty for reviewers. And then it's uh, uh, an exchange, a decentralized exchange, hence the name uh, Cytex, uh, of uh, authors submitting their papers. Uh, so this is similar to Peerage of Science, authors submitting their papers, uh, reviewers. Uh, so I can show you quickly how it would work. So I can submit my paper here. I can review other people's papers. And then uh, the mechanism I've explained where uh, article processing charges are divided equally among all reviewers. So here we are using the, the two other capabilities, which are access control for reviewers. And uh, here, here is another example, which is the this fictional data science journal for Ocean. This is not an actual project that's, that's going to to be done, but uh, same principle. Uh, so access control for reviewers, uh, which opens uh, reviews to anyone who is willing to provide them, and also payment processing. And so uh, this shows something else I wanted to highlight, which is that you can uh, customize uh, the, the basic, uh, you know, the basic code uh, to your own style branding, et cetera, you can even change. Of course, it's very simple uh, HTML, so you can uh, you, you can even change the components and everything. And I'm also working on uh, a wizard tool where DAOs can launch the, the job uh, you know, in a few clicks without having to, to see any call at all. So no code, uh, Silex is, the, uh, is coming soon. And so I wanted to get to Besides some other integration projects we have of uh, things that may or may not directly relate to uh, academic uh, peer review, uh, I'll just mention this, this interesting project I have with a group of uh, psychedelics researchers, where we use uh, Cydex both for uh, the journal, Acta Psychologica, but also for a platform where uh, psychonauts, people experimenting psychedelics, can report their experience and monetize their, uh, their data. So this is Cydex. Uh, beyond that, uh, I wanted to uh, mention a few points about uh, onboarding normally uh, authors, uh, because 
uh, I've heard some very interesting uh, discussions in the, the, the panel uh, today about, uh, you know, legacy institutions. Should we replace them? Should we, uh, you know, uh, do better than them or live beside them? When it comes to academic publishers, they are really providing a value in terms of the discoverability of, uh, you know, research uh, and its uh, search engine optimization, how high it appears in in Google, that's something that even uh, you know the best of us in in DSI, even uh, the researcher which is at the forefront, uh, is not yet capable of doing. And that's something I I, I talk about freely because I, I discuss uh, these points uh, very often with uh, Jeffrey, notably from Research Hub. So this is one aspect we should really make efforts in uh, SEO. And it, it takes very simple, uh, you know, steps. Uh, for example, you have noticed that when uh, authors publish articles, uh, universities make press releases, and these are not directly responsible for discovering the articles, but they boost your uh, SEO. When it's a link coming from a .edu uh, website, your your article gets uh, appears higher in Google. Same for blog posts, which is something that is also encouraged when you publish an article. Uh, so this kind of traditional practices, I think, should be adopted by, by this side. And now when it comes to the, the publishing platforms themselves, uh, for example, any uh, journal built on Cydex, uh, there is a hierarchy of uh, you know, uh, indices, uh, indexing services. Um, and for most people in my institutions, myself as well, uh, most researchers I know, uh, they wouldn't look at the journal if they are invited, for example, by email, if it's not indexed in Web of Science. So this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, an absolute requirement for for uh, submitting to a journal if you wanted to count, you know, because we function mainly based on KPI, institutional research. So this is an absolute requirement to, to get there. Well, there are a few, a few degrees of uh, indexing. The most basic and easiest, in fact, is Google Scholar, uh, which only takes uh, some specific formatting of the, you know, the, the HTML pages, uh, where the abstract and authors and references have to appear before you access the article. So this is very basic, something we should uh, really target in design general. Next stage, which is a requirement for Scopus, is to request an ISSN. Uh, I don't even know if uh, Research Hub has it, uh, but that's something we are requesting, for example, for the blockchain uh, law journal. Uh, again, uh, in theory, it's uh, available to anyone. You just have to request it. It takes some bureaucratic work, just like all the, the other indices, but that's uh, also uh, something that helps a lot both in, uh, you know, discoverability as well as in accessing the, the indexing services. And then, the, the thing that will uh, make researchers come are indexing in Scopus uh, easier than Web of Science. So they have a set of criteria about the editorial board, about the ethical practices you mentioned in your pages, etc. Very simple, but uh, kind of um, bureaucratic kind of uh, guidelines to follow. Someone has to do it. Uh, and then Web of Science, which is really uh the top of these generalist uh indexing services and then of course you have more specialized services and you have services by country etc but this is really as good as it gets in terms of uh, generalist services that gives you access to an impact factor etc uh well they have the same the, the same kind of uh, criteria but more rigorous and so i think this is really something that can help attract uh traditional uh researchers and researchers in general it's that some publications in this side get at least some of these uh, indexing services. Another thing that can help is to abstract away the technical complexity of a wallet. There are many good solutions right now. Uh, the one I like personally, which I have no financial connection with whatsoever, is uh, Privy, which is really the, the tech behind uh, friend tech, uh, you know, the very popular uh, social FI service right now that's privy so i i, I encourage uh, everyone to check it out if you don't know about them they abstract well the difficulty of you know private keys etc 
And if you want to keep it, you can keep it too, but uh, you can replace it with email, phone uh, number, Twitter account, etc. Magic Wallet and Coinbase Wallet do the same thing, but uh, my subjective opinion was that they weren't as uh, seamless. So that's another point. And quickly, the last point, uh, there's also some uh, work to do in influencing policy. Uh, that's part of the reason why we have uh, created the blockchain law journal. Uh, in that, we need to influence uh, institutions to recognize the work we do in, uh, you know, DCI, uh, especially for people who have one uh, foot in, in both, uh, both DCI and traditional uh, science. Uh, this should be part of the, the KPI as well. Uh, so the example I always give is that if I review a paper for uh, MDPI, that counts as academic service in my uh, traditional science institution. But uh, any work I do in, in, in this size, since it's not part of the, you know, the uh, indexing services, uh, wouldn't count. So there is some work to do in, uh, you know, uh, influencing policy in these institutions. So I hope uh, I was clear-ish. Uh, despite the, the brain fog of, of COVID. Symptoms are not too bad, but uh, it's kind of, sometimes you, you lose focus. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in creating your own publication or joining the publications that I mentioned, or uh, if you have any questions about this side whatsoever, please get in touch with me. I'm Andosh on uh, Twitter. These are the socials of uh, this, uh, of uh, Sidex specifically. And that's it. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, Nassim. Um, that was quite an in-depth presentation. I think we touched upon a lot of cool things. And as a matter of fact, and again, uh, the audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to put in. Um, I know for me, the biggest question slash concern that I have in the realm of publication is, I think it's great that we have these technologies that allow more participants to come into the playing ground and even devise novel incentivization structures that you know can leverage crypto don't necessarily need to leverage crypto um, but i think it's going in a good direction but i think fundamentally the biggest shift required is a socio psychological shift right so the the to your last point the idea of needing reputation right of you of of people defaulting to well if it's in springer nature then it's good but if it's not in springer nature then it's not good and the inability or the 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 lack of recognition of what occurs in a more open framework like DSI to be packaged into that is a huge issue nobody's going to want to start publishing in the MedDAO journal as an example if it doesn't translate to an h score or, or anything that, it, that impacts them. And so I'd love to kind of hear if there are any insights yourself, you wrote a beautiful paper with a bunch of participants, well-known individuals in the space. Um, so you've been at it from the core um, for a long time. Any particular insights you might give in terms of what do you think are the best ways to help shift that cognitive awareness? How can we start to make it such that, that my implement it, my collaboration uh, contribution to DSI is recognized by peers. Yes, I think uh, there are two things at play here. What I've mentioned regarding uh, reputation, regarding the indexing services as well. Um, I've called it generalist. You may call it NPC approach as well, which is to follow KPIs. Of course, most of the incentives are there. But in science, there's also something we all enjoy. That's really why we are all here. It's to talk to smart people in small groups, you know, get uh, interesting ideas out there and share them. Uh, so that's also an aspect that, uh, you know, powers many publications. That's why I mentioned the journal, the electronic journal of combinatorics, but you find even smaller, uh, you know, publications that have their very faithful readership, very faithful people who publish there and like to, to share ideas and discuss. Uh, and that's another, another format, uh, another model for the kind of publications we can create. Uh, which are, you know, tightly uh, knit groups like this, who can have uh, their outlet for getting ideas out there, no matter how many people read them at the end. Uh, now, for it, when it comes to, to practical steps in which we can uh, onboard people in line with this idea, I think both types of, of people, both the journalists, uh, researchers following KPIs, as well as the kind of, this kind of groups, uh, I think nothing beats uh, physical presence in uh, conferences, in 
seminars. I'm trying to do a few here in Thailand. Uh, whenever possible, for example, to uh, Meddow, I've recommended a tour of all medical schools uh, because uh, myself, I've been in, in crypto since 2017, 2018. I've learned about DeSci very late, many years after that. It took, it took some actual uh, prestige and institutions. I am an MPC, just like uh, all the researchers. So uh, it took uh, Sarah's paper, Sarah Hamburg, uh, in Nature. It was around the, the pandemic where uh, many people talked about, you know, the, the donations from Vitalik to research, etc. cetera. Uh, and that's what it took. Uh, I didn't take it seriously. I, I was hearing about, you know, things being done, uh, but uh, I, I just didn't take time to go through it, etc. So sometimes all it takes is someone to present uh, compound information to you, and that's it. But uh, again, I think nothing beats traveling to people and visiting them in their institution. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. And with that in mind, thank you very much for taking your time to, though you being sick, coming to us and providing us this package of information oh, that is recorded, will be around. Um, very much appreciated. So Nassim, go take care of yourself. Uh, I'm sure it's very late or very early, actually, in Thailand. So thank you for right. your time and we'll be thank in you. contact. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Take care. Mm -hmm.